In this video, we'll take a closer look at our Blazor combo box. In the previous video, we showed you how to get started by adding the combo box and enabling some features. Now we'll look at two more features, multiple columns and cascade lists. The combo box component can display data across multiple columns. I've already configured a simple combo box that displays a staff list. Now I'm going to add columns to the combo box. I add a columns tag to the markup to declare a column collection. Then I populate the collection with DX list editor column objects. I use the field name property to bind columns to data source fields. Okay, let's take a look at this in the browser. The components dropdown window now displays five columns. Now I'll customize the column appearance. I specify custom captions for the first name and last name columns. Set the salary column width. And I also hide the ID column and change first name and last name column positions. Let's take a look at these changes. Now the drop down list displays only four columns. The ID column is hidden. The first column is surname, the second column is name. The salary column has a fixed width. The multi column combo box supports search capabilities. I enable auto search mode and specify the filter condition contains. First, I clear the edit box, and then I can type text to filter list items. There are four items that match the search string motors. You can exclude a specific column from search operations. For example, to exclude the department column, I set its search enabled property to false. Now the component does not search text in the department column. If I type another search string, JO, you can see that the combo box still searches the text in other columns. The Blazor combo box also allows you to change column cell appearance and content. Now I'm going to customize cell content in the salary column. To do this, I add the column cell display template to the markup and add code that applies the currency format to salary cell values. Okay, the salary column now displays currency values. Next, I'll demonstrate how to create cascade combo boxes when one combo box contains values based on the user selection in another combo box. For example, you need to implement two combo boxes, country and city. When a user selects a country, the city combo box is automatically populated with corresponding cities. I already prepared sample data. There are country and city types that include a set of properties. The country city class has methods that retrieve a list of countries and a list of cities. I also created the following fields, countries, current country cities, current country, and current city. The onInitialize method will be invoked when combo box components are initialized, and the selected country changed method will handle changes in selected values. Now I should configure combo boxes. I add a DX combo box that displays countries. I specify a data source, the combo box's selected value, and the data source field that provides a text for the combo box item. The second combo box displays current country cities. And as you can see, the combo boxes display countries and cities. When Germany is selected, the second combo box displays Berlin, Munich, Hamburg. However, when I select another country, the city list does not change. To respond to the selected item change, I should handle the value changed event. Okay, now the Cascade combo boxes work as expected. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified whenever we release new content. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.